Oke. Okay. Selamat pagi uh, semuanya para peserta FDE 2022. Terima kasih uh, masih bergabung bersama kami di FDE 2022 hari kedua. Kemarin kita sudah menjalani empat sesi di hari pertama dan hari ini masih ada empat sesi lagi. Jadi dijaga stamina-nya. Kita masih sembari nunggu teman-teman yang lain pada join. Kami mau menyampaikan lagi ucapan terima kasih kepada kawan-kawan lembaga yang sudah mendukung acara ini berlangsung, yaitu platform kooperasi digital coding, Asian Solidarity Economic Council atau ASEC Indonesia, Yayasan Proklamator Bung Hatta atau YPBH, dan kerjasama banyak sekali lembaga ya yang berkenan mendukung, menyebarkan informasi, dan juga menjadi pemateri dan moderator pada setiap sesinya. Dan tentu saja kami berterima kasih kepada teman-teman peserta yang sudah mendaftar dan hadir di acara FDE 2022 kali ini, gitu di dua hari ini, tanggal 13 hingga 14 Agustus 2022. Karena bersama teman-teman lah kemungkinan demokrasi ekonomi di Indonesia dapat terwujud. Nah, sesi pagi ini kita akan belajar dari negeri tetangga, gitu dari Jepang. Uh, di sini ada Mr. Naka, Nakano dari Japan Co uh, Worker Cooperative Union. Dia akan banyak sharing dan akan dipandu oleh Alia dari New The New Factory. Ah, and, aku lupa. Uh, the New Factory. Ya, yeah, yeah. TNF The New Factory. Sebelum kita ke masuk ke sesinya, aku akan menjelaskan lagi-lagi ke teman-teman untuk mengajukan pertanyaan. Teman-teman bisa mengajukannya melalui slido. Link slidonya sudah aku kirimkan melalui chat. Boleh berbahasa Indonesia maupun bahasa Inggris, nanti akan dibantu translate. Aku akan share screen-nya. Ya, seperti kemarin, teman-teman bisa langsung aja tulis pertanyaannya di sini. Langsung di send. Kalau mau di push namanya tadi juga bisa. Terus apabila teman-teman belum ada pertanyaan, bisa juga tetap buka tautannya untuk lihat pertanyaan mana yang kira-kira layak untuk segera ditanyakan karena teman-teman bisa voting pertanyaan dan karena waktunya terbatas jadi akan mengulurkan pertanyaan dari yang paling banyak votingnya sampai ke bawah gitu tapi kalau misalnya waktunya cukup akan dibahas semua pertanyaannya gitu nah karena sesi kali ini berbahasa Inggris teman-teman mungkin ada fitur baru di, di deretan Zoom-nya ya, yaitu in, interpretation. Jadi teman-teman bisa masuk ke channel Bahasa Indonesia juga apabila nggak uh, mau mendengarkan yang bahasa Inggris gitu. Ada pilihan untuk bisa mendengarkan dalam bahasa Indonesia. Nah silahkan mungkin Mas Sena mau menjelaskan tentang penggunaan fiturnya. Oke, terima kasih Bima. Jadi aku share screen sedikit. Jadi emang ada fitur interpretasi. Teman-teman itu bisa cek di bawah ada gambar bola dunia. Nah, gambar bola dunia ini tuh kalau diklik ini kalau dari laptop ya atau desktop, diklik nanti ada muncul original audio Inggris Indonesia. Nah, kalau memang teman-teman mau mendengar dengan bahasa Inggris dan itu oke, okay, bisa pilih original audio, tidak perlu melakukan apapun. Kalau mau pilih Inggris juga nanti akan sama aja, tapi pilih saja original audio. Tapi kalau misalnya mau bahasa Indonesia bisa pilih itu ID bahasa Indonesia. Nah, kalau pilih bahasa Indonesia itu nanti sebenarnya suara asli bahasa Inggris akan tetap ada, cuma volumenya kecil. Gitu. Nanti akan diinterpretasi saya, udah pilih bahasa Indonesia, seharusnya yang terdengar adalah suara dari interpreter dari saya. Jadi nanti pembicara maupun moderator akan tetap berkomunikasi dalam bahasa Inggris. Gitu. Kalau ternyata oke okay, mau nyoba bahasa Inggrisnya, ini bisa ditukar-tukar kapanpun teman-teman mau. Dan kalau misalnya ternyata e, suara yang asli itu agak mengganggu, mau benar-benar full bahasa Indonesia, ada menu mute original audio. Ini ya. 
mute original audio. Jadi pilihannya, saran saya milih original audio atau Indonesia. Gitu. Kalau Indonesia, dan ternyata tadi suara yang asli agak e, kecampur-campur, dan itu bisa pilih mute original audio, jadi full bahasa Indonesia yang didengar. Ini kalau dari desktop. Lalu kalau dari HP, bisa klik tombol more yang di sebelah kanan bawah. Ada menu language interpretation, sama. Dan pada prinsipnya sama ya, bisa milih original audio, Inggris atau Indonesia. Sebenarnya opsi Inggris ini untuk keperluan kita sekarang diabaikan aja dulu. Pilih original audio atau Indonesia. Dan sekali lagi sama, kalau nanti ternyata suara aslinya yang bahasa Inggris itu kecampur terlalu mengganggu, bisa dinyalakan mute original audio supaya full bahasa Indonesia. Silakan dicoba-coba, nanti selama acara bisa ditukar-tukar kalau mau, yaudah Inggrisnya oke okay kok didengerin. Atau, aduh agak susah, yaudah bahasa Indonesia bisa disesuaikan. Gitu ya, dicoba-coba menu interpretasinya. Harusnya cukup, aku kembalikan okay. ke Bima. Terima kasih banyak Mas Ena penjelasannya. Oke, okay, kita langsung saja ke Alia. Silahkan kemudian dari sesi kali ini. Silahkan. Oke, okay. thank you Mas Sena, Mas Bima. Welcome everyone to the first session of the Festival Demokrasi Ekonomi Second Day. Uh, this session will be about learning from international examples of worker co-ops, uh, specifically Japan's example of worker co-ops. So do prepare a lot of questions because hopefully it will be a super insightful discussion. So a bit of a background for our speaker today, Mr. Nakano-san, who I'll be introducing in a bit. Uh, the audience here today are mostly activists, scholars, and co-op members themselves. As you know, um, Indonesia don't have a lot of worker co-ops right now. We do have quite a bit of um, savings or credit union types of co-ops, but in general, co-ops uh, do not feature very dominantly in, in national economic planning or national economic discourse which we personally feel is such a missed opportunity because uh, the promise of potential uh, that co-ops can have in becoming part of the solution to some of the most uh, pressing problems of our time, like inequality, like unemployment, and to a certain extent, environmental degradation due to irresponsible business practices as well. So um, so yeah, it's, it's quite an intimate session today, uh, but nonetheless, I'm sure all of us here are, are very excited and eager to learn from you. And from Japan, where worker co-ops are much more developed as a sector and more organized as, as, as a sector. And because worker co-ops are a re a relatively unexplored topics in Indonesia, our questions later will range from like the basic theoretical ones to a very technical one. So I hope uh, you can enlighten us um, in those in those questions. Um, so everyone, we are, so that, that was for Mr. Uh, Nakano, but for everyone, we're joined today with a very experienced speaker. We have Osamu Nakano-san. Osamu Nakano is a board member uh, and the director of international relations department at the Japan Workers Cooperative Union. He is also an active staff of the Japan Cooperative Alliance, an umbrella organization of all cooperatives in Japan. So that, that's a really big organization. Uh, Nakano-san also served as a visiting researcher at the University of Tokyo and an advisor to, uh, of the Institute for the, the Cooperative Digital Economy. So we're so glad uh, to have him today. Thank you for coming. Um, Hoda Katebi from the Bluetooth production in the United States was also supposed to be in the panel today, but unfortunately she had a last minute emergency and could not make it um, to, the, to the session, unfortunately. Uh, but that's okay because the session today will have Nakano-san open with a presentation about the work that um, the JWC uh, you, the Japan Worker Cooperative Union, uh, is doing, as well as Japan's co-op sector more broadly. Uh, I believe we have an interpreter today with us, so uh, he will be helping us to translate from English to Indonesia for those who need the translation. Um, so after his presentation, it will be followed with a Q&A from both the audience and the moderator myself. Um, but of course, we will prioritize the audience question as much as possible. So we very, very much invite you all to ask questions uh, if you want. Um, so without further ado, I will hand over the stage to our speaker. Uh, Nakano-san, the floor is yours. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, pretty good introduction, uh, uh, Miss Aria. And uh, I'm very happy to join here today and talking uh, with you about what a cooperative movement in the world and in Japan. All right, uh, uh, you already know, you know who I'm, uh, who I am. So I, I, I will speak, uh, you know, uh, and uh, I wanna, I wanna share, uh, share screen. Uh, 
can you can you see it? All right. Okay. So uh, today uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about worker cooperative movement in Japan. But uh, <clears throat> before that, I I I wanna talk a little bit about uh, cooperative movement in the world. And first of all, uh, some of uh, most of uh, most of you or some of you, I, I'm not sure, but uh, you know, you know, uh, cooperative movement uh, is a pretty global. And uh, there is international organization called International Cooperative Alliance (ICA). And the ICA was founded, established in 1895. Uh, and the member countries organization, a member countries is uh, 112, and organization is uh, 318. And the member individual, uh, actually, a member individual uh, within under ICA reached uh, 1 billion in the world. And this is a pretty big, a big, a pretty big number, right? And moreover, uh, annual turnover of 300 la uh, biggest cooperatives uh, within the ICA reached 2.15 uh, uh, trillion US dollars. Uh, this is almost uh, this number is almost the same or similar to GDP of Canada or India. So uh, uh, in, uh, in this manner, you know, uh, we cooperative movement in the world, so we have uh, many people and we have uh, many uh, economic power, uh, we have a strong uh, economic power. And moreover, you know, focus, uh, focusing on you know, employment or job creation. And actually cooperatives in, uh, you know, is creating 280 million uh, works in the world. And this is almost 12% of the, uh, all employment, total employment of G20 countries. So in this regard, uh, uh, you know, uh, not, uh, not mainly uh, money and, and people, uh, but also uh, uh, employment, job creation. You know, cooperatives uh, has a pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty much strong power, All right? And the CCOPER, CCOPER is a sectoral organization of worker corps uh, within ICA, and the CCOPER was established in 1947, and the CCOPER has definition of uh, you know what worker cooperatives are uh, in other words uh, uh, according to them uh, cooperatives in industrial and service sectors of which uh, principal objective is to serve uh, members employment or business activities this is a fundamental definition of uh, cooperatives in industrial and sectors and this definition includes various kinds of cooperatives uh, in you know uh, industrial service sectors such as worker cooperatives labor cooperatives social cooperatives shared service cooperatives multi-stakeholder cooperatives employee-owned enterprises and so on and today i don't have a, i don't have enough time to explain you know all uh, all, all of these uh, you know uh, types of uh, cooperatives in industrial service sectors but uh, I, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm pretty happy to explain. You know, if you have uh, any kind of questions about uh, these, uh, you know, categories. So, uh, by the way, you know, social cooperatives. Uh, uh, social cooperatives means cooperatives uh, providing and service or and or employment, employment, uh, job opportunities for people with disabilities. So, according to Cooper, you know, social cooperatives are uh, included. Uh, in you know cooperatives in industrial industrial and service sectors, All right? By the way, you know Cooper right now uh, thirty five member uh, countries and fifty one member organizations, and uh, <clears throat> the total uh, to, uh, to, uh, total of uh, you know uh, work, uh, worker members uh, within Cooper reach four million individuals uh, in the world, and right now Cooper. Uh, has three regional networks, CECOP, uh, CECOPA Europe, and the CECOPA Americas, and the CECOPA, uh, CECOPA Asia, Asia and Pacific, CECOPA AP. And the CECOPA Asia and the Pacific, CECOPA AP is a pretty new organization just established uh, last year. And however, you know, we already have uh, these member organization from Australia and China, and the two, uh, two members from India and Indonesia, of course, Indonesian Cooperative Development Studies, 
and also two organizations, uh, two members from Iran and Japan, South Korea and the Philippines. And the industry, actually, you know, right now, you know, I'm acting as a chair, a chairperson of the CEPOPA FIC, CEPOPA AP, We're trying to spread the cooperative movement or movement of uh, cooperatives in industrial service sectors uh, through, you know, Asia Pacific regions. All right. Japan. Japan Workers Cooperative Union, JWCU, uh, my organization, is a national center of worker cooperatives in Japan, established in 1979. And we have, our, uh, we have almost 16,000 uh, worker members and uh, 450 uh, business centers throughout the country, throughout Japan. And our uh, fiscal, uh, our turnover uh, is uh, almost uh, 37 uh, billion yen. And the JWC is a member of ICA, Copper, and the Japan Cooperative Alliance, JCA. JCA, uh, you know, as uh, Ms. Uh, Ariel already, uh, already explained, JCA is an apex organization of uh, cooperative movement in Japan, including uh, aggregates and consumers, fishery, forestry, and workers, and something like that. All right. And the working style of workers' cooperatives uh, is called uh, by us, uh, you know, we are called working style of workers' cooperatives as associated work. And as you may know, in this uh, working style, uh, only one member, single member, can do three issues. Uh, you know, working and making capital contributions and management. And it's pretty clear, you know, this kind of work, uh, uh, working style is uh, very different from, you know, working style in, uh, you know, a private company or joint stock company. Because as you know, in joint stock companies, you know, uh, investment, uh, capital contribution, investment and the management and the working are totally separated, right? And they're, uh, they're investors, managers and workers and they are doing a you know, different job their own job their own you know uh, their own uh, you know, job right so however in worker uh, you know uh, uh, again you know one uh, one member uh, can be engaged in all all three uh, you know uh, activities working uh, capital contribution and the management and the JWCU, you know, we defined uh, this kind of working style as, uh, as follows. It's a new way of working uh, enterprises in which each person could be a master of his, his or her own life. It's a way of linking the needs of human life, local communities, and their difficulties, such that everybody jointly contributes to building a capital, managing business democratically, and sharing responsibility. Yeah, so this is a uh, basic uh, definition or bas uh, basic definition of, uh, you know, uh, associated work, in other words, uh, specific uh, working style of workers' cooperatives uh, by us, uh, JWC. So uh, by the way, so, uh, you know, this is a very uh, basic uh, definition or basic ex explanation. So I'm happy to uh, receive a uh, question from you uh, later. All right. A business fields of workers' cooperative in Japan is uh, generally uh, concerned on uh, social care and care works in broad sense. You know, we are doing uh, you know care and support for elderly and children, uh, uh, elderly care or child care, and also we are uh, providing uh, care uh, care service, uh, care and support service for the people with disabilities. And uh, also, we are doing operational public facilities and the cleaning logistic service. And moreover, uh, after, uh, you know, uh, pretty recently, so we are trying to develop, uh, we are challenging to develop, uh, you know, uh, fast industry uh, in a sense, uh, in a certain sense, in other words, uh, community-based uh, forest management and farming and, and, clean, uh, and clean energy business. All right. And uh, this is, uh, this is a distinctive characteristic of worker cooperative movement in Japan. You know, members, uh, our members, uh, member, uh, our members uh, include uh, people having uh, various, uh, various disabilities and difficulties, you know, uh, such as uh, mental uh, or physical disabilities, alcoholism, 
Asperger syndrome, drug dependence, HIV, etc., and ex-prisoners, ex-homeless use in social difficulties, and so on. This is because uh, we, uh, JWC, we are thinking, you know, local, local cooperatives should or have to create or have to be engaged in business uh, necessary to uh, local communities and uh, human life, uh, everyday life of human being in local communities. So uh, gen uh, generally speaking, you know, uh, worker cooperatives in the world, uh, worker cooperatives can be engaged in uh, any kind of work uh, uh, you want. In other words, we can do, you know, IT business or, you know, huge industry or something like that. So however, uh, we, you know, worker cooperative, Japanese worker cooperatives, we are, uh, we are, uh, we decided to be engaged in, you know, social care or care works. Uh, because, uh, because uh, as uh, as I already uh, mentioned, because these uh, social care and the care works are pretty necessary to uh, uh, everyday life of human being in their life uh, in in local uh, local communities. All right, uh, this is one uh, example. Uh, one example, just just only one for worker cooperatives in Japan. So, uh, worker, this worker cooperative called Ajisai Hydrogen, you know, uh, in in these worker cooperatives, uh, there are uh, uh, almost 40 members are working here in worker cooperatives, and half of them uh, are having mental or physical disabilities or difficulties. At the same time, uh, other of them, uh, later half of them, are 65 years old or over. And you can see uh, this man in left side. So as you can see, you know, he has, uh, you know, uh, Down syndrome. So however, you know, he's working as a, a worker members of our cooperatives. And then right now, you know, uh, actually, you know, this worker cooperatives is, uh, you know, running uh, care, uh, care center for uh, elderly. So in this regard, this guy uh, with uh, th this man, and this gentleman with uh, uh, Down syndrome, so he is right now, you know, uh, caring or uh, providing care for uh, uh, older uh, lady in right side. She's users and he's, uh, you know, care workers. And moreover, uh, women uh, already in middle side. So actually, you know, she's, uh, she's uh, already, you know, 80 years old. So however, you know, she's still, you know, working as a worker member of co our cooperatives. And also, you know, she, uh, right now, you know, she's taking care of, uh, of her, you know, uh, user of, of their, you know, uh, care center, elderly care center. So in this regard, uh, we think so here, uh, for instance, uh, here, you know, we can find uh, find out, you know certain kind of mutual uh, mutual help or mutual cooperation uh, between uh, you know people with disabilities and uh, elderly persons, uh, you know, uh, regardless uh, of regardless of, of they uh, of they have uh, you know uh, disease or di uh, difficulties or dis uh, dis disabilities or not. Right, this is a specific, uh, typical example of worker cooperative movement in Japan. Right, so uh, however, uh, actually, you know what, uh, we, JWCU has almost 40 years history in Japan, uh, you know, pretty, uh, pretty much, uh, pretty long uh, history, uh, uh, history. So however, the <clears throat> we haven't have a legal entity over uh, in Japan. In other words, there has not, uh, there wasn't uh, law on worker cooperative in Japan. So in Japan, uh, you know, cooperative law are separated, and uh, you know there are uh, several cooperatives uh, according to you know uh, cooperative types in Japan. You know, uh, agricultural cooperatives law uh, and consum uh, law for consumer cooperatives and law for you know credit to bank, uh, you know credit, uh, you know, credit to banking or something like that. However, you know we haven't have a uh, worker, co uh, worker cooperative law. So, however, uh, you know uh, two years ago. <coughs> Uh, December uh, two uh, December two thousand twenty, you know the enactment uh, of the new worker cooperative act in Japan uh, 
can be done, uh, was, uh, was done with the agreement of all political parties in Japan. So uh, it's a new cooperative act in Japan for the last 40 years since 1978. And this law is pretty big, you know, consi uh, consisting of 171 articles. And uh, this is a uh, first, uh, first article of uh, Worker Cooperative Act in Japan. And this, uh, uh, this, uh, this article uh, this, uh, explain uh, objective of worker cooperatives and a legal definition of worker co cooperatives. So this is pretty important. And uh, the organizations of which the fundamental principle is that the members make capital contribution to them and their business are conducted by <coughs> reflecting the opinions of members and the members themselves are engaged in their business. This is a legal definition of worker cooperatives uh, in Japan. And moreover, there are three, uh, uh, this, uh, this article uh, describes three uh, opportunity, uh, three purposes, or uh, three objectives of worker cooperatives. First is uh, the creation of diverse employment opportunities. So uh, as, uh, as I already mentioned, so we the WCU uh, had uh, created you know, job opportunities you know, for, you know, uh, for everybody, uh, everybody uh, you know, for everybody want to, uh, want to, uh, everybody uh, want to job, right? You know, uh, people, with, uh, people with disabilities and elderly people and something like that. And in this regard, uh, you know, the creation of diverse employment opportunities is uh, written in, in this act as a uh, first purpose of objective of workers' cooperatives. And the second objective is uh, in implementation of business to meet uh, diverse demands in, in local communities. So uh, I, uh, I also ex explained this already. You know, uh, uh, so, strictly speaking, you know, worker cooperatives can be done, uh, you know, all kinds of business activities, right? So, however, you know, we, Water Cooperative in Japan, we decide to be engaged uh, in, uh, you know, care work on, and social work, which are uh, pretty necessary to local communities and everyday life of human beings in local communities. And the final, uh, final objective of Water Cooperative in Japan is the realization of sustainable and vibrant communities. <clears throat> and uh, as, you, as you know, you know, this, uh, final uh, objectives is uh, echoed, uh, strongly echoed, uh, you know, SDGs, you know, sustain uh, sustainable development goals. So, uh, yeah. And uh, this is uh, pictures, uh, it explains, you know, uh, worker, uh, the, uh, the structure of workers' cooperatives in, uh, in, uh, with comp uh, in comparison to, you know, the so-called employ employed work, in other words, you know, working staff, in joint stock companies, right? And uh, worker cooperatives. So uh, worker cooperatives is uh, you know uh, worker cooperatives uh, uh, obviously you know follows you know ILO recommendation uh, one nineteen three and is thus obliged to uphold a high level of labor standards. So in this regard, to the least, uh, a worker cooperative enters into labor contract. Is is uh, with its worker members and assures them uh, distant work, and at the same time, the business of worker cooperatives must be conducted by reflecting the opinions of uh, of their worker members. So uh, these uh, figures, uh, this uh, these pictures is all, uh, it, uh, also explain and uh, show, you know, how to work, uh, you know, worker cooperatives, uh, in particular for the uh, in, uh, particularly on the relationship between worker members. Or their workers and the worker cooperatives itself. On the other hand, you know, a conclusion of labor contract between members and the representative director or their worker cooperative itself is uh, pretty necessary. And this means uh, worker members are, you know, theoretically or formally under the direction and the supervision of the represent uh, representative director. So this uh, and and moreover. You know, worker members are protected by labor laws, and I'm sure you know all labor laws in uh, in the world, all countries, under labor laws, uh, workers should be employed or uh, must be employed uh, in order to be protected by labor laws. So, in in other words, 
workers uh, should, uh, must be formally under the direction or supervision of their uh, managers or, or of their proprietors. So this is uh, this is a fundamental a legal requirement uh, in order that uh, worker members uh, of uh, worker cooperatives are protected by labor laws. So, however, so this kind of uh, uh, you know working relationship is totally same. Uh, you know those within you know uh, joint stock company, right? So in this regard, it's a different thing, a uh, different from joint stock comp company is that. So, uh, Management must be conducted by reflecting the opinions of members, worker members in worker cooperative law in Japan. So uh, situation is pretty clear, right? So uh, in joint stock company, you know, management, uh, you know, don't, doesn't care about uh, the opinions of members, right? So however, you know, worker cooperative management should be, must be conducted by uh, through the opinions of members. And moreover, you know, in workers' cooperatives, worker members can uh, can participate in the decision-making process under the principle of one member or uh, one member uh, one vote. Uh, this is uh, this is not uh, this is not uh, unique to a worker cooperative itself. You know, this is a fundamental you know uh, principle for all cooperatives in the world, right? So in other words, uh, regardless of, uh, of the amount of, of your capital contributions, you know, we, uh, you know, worker members or member, uh, cooperative member can participate in the decision making uh, by the following principle of one member, one vote. So in this regard, you know, here, here can be found, you know, very uh, democratic, uh, you know, management of uh, business. So in this regard, so worker, corporate, uh, worker cooperatives uh, in, uh, uh, at least in you know Japanese law, so uh, worker cooperatives uh, has you know two kind of dimension, so as this uh, picture showed. On the one hand, you know worker cooperatives uh, so assures or assures or provides you know uh, worker protections to uh, their members by following labor rules, and on the on the other hand, you know uh, worker cooperatives provide a uh, uh, certain kind of uh, uh, power or economic power or a political uh, will, a political power or a, a sort of subjectivity or uh, yeah, uh, you know, uh, yeah, economic, economic power to their members. So by following the principle of one member, one vote and uh, by uh, assuring uh, the management staff uh, uh, but should be ref uh, should reflect the opinions of members. So uh, this is uh, uh, this is uh, a structure of uh, worker cooperatives, uh, at least in the worker cooperative act in Japan. All right. So this is distinctive characteristic of worker cooperative uh, worker cooperative act in Japan. But uh, I I I want to explain uh, this uh, part uh, pretty quickly. You know, uh, worker cooperative act, uh, as uh, as I told you already. You know, uh, worker cooperative act in Japan. Uh, you know, so, uh, were uh, showed uh, the importance or influence of uh, SDGs, sustain, sustain, sustainable development development goals. And moreover, uh, under the law, the establishment of worker cooperatives is <coughs> authorized when the conditions are met. Differently from other cooperatives in Japan. <clears throat> which can be established upon the governmental approval. In other words, uh, in order to establish a uh, worker cooperative in Japan, so we don't need any kind of governmental approval. So we uh, we just submit, we just submit you know necessary uh, documents to you know to authorities. That's it. And moreover, at the minimum, three funders, three uh, three members can establish worker cooperatives. Moreover, no restrictions on business fields. Expect, except worker dispatching business. And generally speaking, you know, uh, what cooperatives, cooperative movement are, uh, there are certain kind of list, uh, there are restrictions on business fields uh, uh, in you know, cooperative movements. For instance, agricultural cooperatives uh, should be, or uh, can be, uh, can be engaged in, you know, uh, only agricultural business and other, you know, related business, uh, right? So, however, you know, in, under worker cooperative law in Japan, there are no restrictions 
own business fees. So we can uh, actually, you know, uh, we can, uh, uh, so in this regard, uh, this means, so local cooperatives can be engaged, uh, social care and uh, elderly care, uh, social care and care works, of, of course, and moreover, you know, agricultural business and uh, consumer business and IT business and anything, anything you want. And moreover, uh, and also, you know, no, uh, di uh, no dividend on capital contribution. So surplus is accumulated as a job creation and the education fund. The remaining uh, of surplus is distributed to members depends on the amount of their management uh, engagement. In other words, depends all on the amount of their work. So <clears throat> moreover, worker cooperatives must not carry out their business for profit. So in other words, so by uh, no dividend on capital contributions and no no profitable profitable business. So according to these uh, these uh, requirements, uh, you know uh, this law uh, in Worker Cooperative Act in Japan. So assure you know certain kind of no, uh, kind of non profit character of worker cooperatives in Japan. All right, uh, you know uh, in uh, uh, two years ago, you know when uh, this law was enacted. IRO released a news report entitled The Passage of Water Cooperative Beer in Japan is celebrated around the world. Indeed, I see a super, you know, uh, celebrated, you know, uh, the passage of this uh, pretty great uh, uh, law for water cooperative in Japan. And uh, the reason why, you know, I explain, you know, pretty much about, uh, you know, water cooperative act in Japan is because, you know, this kind of act can be model for uh, you know, for or the country, I'm not sure Indonesia, but can be model for the country or areas which uh, doesn't have a you know a legal legal framework for workers co cooperative yet. So yeah, uh, that, this uh, this is the reason why you know I explained uh, you know a little bit uh, you know a lot about you know the law in Japan. Right. <clears throat> Finally, you know, last year. Uh, this is, uh, you know, United Nations uh, report. Uh, uh, this uh, report uh, was submitted uh, was submit uh, was submit by, you know, uh, United Nations Secretary General uh, to General Assembly of uh, of the United Nations. Uh, this report is entitled "Cooperatives is a Cooperative in Social Development," and, and this report, uh, like this, uh, differed to work uh, cooperative uh, act in Japan, uh, right? Japan adopted the Water Cooperative Act in the 1920s, which explicitly includes the concept of uh, sustainable development in the legal text and widens, uh, widens the scope of cooperatives to a new and emerging areas, including cooperatives organized for the reintegration of vulnerable, vulnerable sections of society, including persons with disability. So in this regard, you know, Water Cooperative Act in Japan is highly evaluated, uh, you know, by, uh, even by United Nations. All right, uh, this is my presentations. And yeah, I'm happy to uh, talk with you. I'm happy to receive uh, questions from you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Nakano-san. That was a very comprehensive presentation. Thank you so much for that. Um, there is a lot to dig in for sure. Um, it's interesting that uh, to have the level of scale for cooperative in Japan, um, I think 16,000 specifically for JWCU, right? Um, it's it's also fascinating to learn that many of your member co-ops are operating in the sector, so elderly and child, but also service works like cleaning and public uh, public facilities operations. I think the underlying vision of co-ops uh, as a mean for providing diverse and dignified work uh, are very clearly articulated in your presentation, and it's also great to hear about an un an upcoming worker co-op legislation. Um, we're certainly very curious curious on on what kind of difference that kind of legislation will make to the co-op ecosystem in Japan and how something like that can potentially be championed to in Indonesia. But uh, before we go into questions, because I feel like there, there will be many questions, um, I'd just like to check with the audience first if they have any comment questions that they want to convey directly by uh, unmuting themselves or maybe use the raise hand button and then the host will unmute you. Um, anyone wants to, let me just check the participant list. Anyone want to uh, directly raise their questions or comments on the presentation? Oh yes, there is. Uh, Bahira, <laughs> please. 
unmute yourself or yeah. Okay, uh, hello, uh, Nakanasan. How are you? Thank you for 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 joining us. I'm sorry, off my arm. It's just the, the signal is not good. Uh, so uh, this the bill accepted another Japanese. It's all for Japanese worker. I mean, in international, uh, like migrant worker, there's not there's not so Japanese citizen. They covered with the bills or only for Japanese. This is my first question, and I, I think I will ask not something more. Thank you. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you very much, Hera. This is very, <clears throat> very important and uh, critical uh, questions. And actually, you know, uh, uh, among our members, uh, there, uh, there are some, uh, you know, uh, foreign uh, origin, uh, you know, uh, members. In other words, uh, you know, uh, uh, Brazilian, Jap uh, you know, uh, Japanese Brazilian or Japanese uh, Peruvian and something like that. And moreover, you know, we JWCU, we are uh, very uh, pretty happy to receive, you know, uh, work, uh, our members from any countries or any, mm -hmm. you know, uh, any racial or, you know, ethnic origins. So, however, you know, uh, this, uh, you know, Japanese law, Japanese uh, law on migration is uh, pretty uh, problematic mm -hmm. because, yeah, uh, Japanese government uh, dislike to provide, you know, working visa to uh, you know uh, foreign workers so right now however you know uh, even right now you know uh, 2 million uh, more than 2 million you know uh, foreign uh, foreign workers exist in japan so however you know they are using uh, you know for instance student visa uh, even if they are actually workers so however you know they have they they don't have any kind of uh, other options to use, you know, student visa because Japanese government dislike, uh, doesn't like to provide, you know, working visa to, you know, such a, uh, such a people. So in this regard, so it's, uh, it's, it's obvious, you know, even though working in workers' cooperatives uh, is uh, needs uh, working visa, right? So in this regard, if, uh, you know, Japanese government provide a uh, working visa to, you know, to migrants, so uh, we are pretty happy to receive, uh, to work uh, with them. So, however, you know, yeah. So this is very, uh, you know, uh, important question right now in Japan because, uh, including Indonesia, I think, uh, you know, Japanese government uh, appeal, uh, you know, so many, uh, uh, many, you know, Asia Pacific countries uh, to, in order to invite them uh, as a workers to Japan. So, however, on the other hand, you know, uh, Japan, Japanese government has, uh, you know, several obstacle, legal obstacle to, you know, such a foreign workers. So yeah, this is uh, this is uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, current situation on migrant workers in Japan. Mm -hmm. I think about here I still on you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's just just for for uh, especially for the Japanese. So um, it is Japanese should be reside in the country, or they can reside outside the country. I mean. If uh, the Japanese, but they living in Indonesia, but they can't be part of the worker cooperative in Japan, uh, is it still possible? Or only the Japanese is working in the country? So Japanese is working in, in Japan. They can be a part of the worker co-op. Uh, I think you know, uh, can be, uh, can, uh, can, be uh, can be a part of the worker cooperative. Uh, so however, you know, we are work cooperative, right? So in uh, in this regard, the member have to work, and they have to have to work uh, through our cooperatives. So, however, you know, uh, today, you know, uh, we have a uh, you know pretty developed you know IT uh, IT technology, right? So in this regard, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, possibility or potential that uh, you know uh, worker members uh, in Indonesia. And uh, uh, or Japanese uh, in Indonesia can be a part of worker cooperative movement in Japan. Worker cooperative movement in Japan, and uh, uh, you know, in terms of technology, so uh, in this regard, Indonesian can be a part of uh, cooperative in Japan, worker cooperative in Japan. So, however, again, you know, even if you are in Indonesian, but uh, when you when you work with a cooperative in Japan, so you need to be there. I think. 
so uh, in this year, yeah. Uh, mm, okay. okay, so it, yeah. it 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 is a member. Uh, it's like full members with all the with all the right, like one foot one or just associate members because you because you are not Japanese. Um, as uh, it is, uh, you know what I'm doing with the micro class. So everyone in a other countries, uh, mm -hmm. no matter which citizen you are, mm -hmm. no matter uh, where you reside, where you still can be part of us. And in this, I think we have to embrace the uh, the bills, uh, the the worker cop or the uh, cooperative law in UK because they really open for everyone uh, to register their cop. It is any possibility in Japan to do that uh, through worker co-op? Because as you said, uh, the technology, uh, we can work remote uh, any, anywhere, any part of the world. Do you think this is a possibility to, to do that? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, but, but uh, again, you know, uh, we have to check, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, visa status of, you know, uh, working, uh, status of a working visa. Of, of our members, no matter where they, uh, no, uh, you know, no matter where they, uh, they, uh, they live. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Because in micro class, you don't need the the working visa to work with us. Yeah. Oh, really. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Alia, for giving me chance to ask Bye and here. comment uh, questions. Um, anyone else before we move on to the Slido questions? Okay, so if there is nothing else, I will selfishly <laughs> add my own question a little bit. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, so your organization, the JWCU, comprises of more than 16,000 members, right? And at that level of scale, what does being a co-op mean to the working culture of your organization? Do you feel like the democratic governance aspect of it contributes significantly to a different kind of working culture than, say, uh, what's normal in conventional firms? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, this is a very important question, but uh, could you please explain a little bit more about the scale? So, uh, what, oh, yeah, what, uh, yeah. what do you want to mean uh, for, uh, by scale? Yeah, because you, you have so many people, right? And I think the assumption is as the organization grows bigger, um, it's harder to practice democracy because then there's more forces to kind of incorporate and accommodate. Mm -hmm. So at the level that you are operating right now, so 16,000 members, I know it's divided into different co-ops, mm -hmm. but I think even within within one co-op, they're, they're quite a significant number. Mm -hmm. um, at that, you know, at that number, how do you kind of, um, how does the working culture become, you know, if, okay, if okay. you have democratic governance? All right, all right. Uh, this is very uh, important. But uh, first of all, JWC is a national federation, right? And yeah. uh, so we have a, uh, we have a uh, right now a 34 member organizations, and uh, in our general assemblies, so uh, you know we uh, we we you know uh, we are doing uh, we are doing uh, you know vote, right, for our you know for our working project or something like that, right, mm -hmm. and uh, that that's okay. So because uh, you know uh, all member uh, you know. Uh, so representative uh, from all member organizations can uh, uh, can come to you know our general assemblies, yeah. and that we uh, we could you know democratic uh, democratic uh, you know voting uh, voting uh, practice. So, however, on the other hand, uh, this is pretty complex. So, however, in Japan, there is a, a, a very big uh, uh, primary worker cooperatives called central worker cooperatives. Mm. This is uh, actually primary worker cooperatives, not federation, not federation. So, however, you know, this central worker cooperatives uh, has, uh, you know, uh, 10,000 uh, 10, working members, almost uh, 60, uh, 60 or 70 percent of uh, worker members in Japan under JWCU, uh, they are belonging to central worker cooperatives, primary worker cooperatives. And then, you know, they have a uh, they have uh, business centers, almost 350 business centers from northern part, uh, part of Japan and to, to you know, southern part of Japan. <clears throat> and and I, I want to say, you know, in this uh, central worker cooperatives is a certain kind of prime mover 
of a very important prime mover of workers' cooperative movement in Japan. Mm -hmm. And actually, you know, Central, uh, Central Worker Cooperatives was established uh, directly by JWCU almost 30 years ago. And still right now, you know, uh, Central Worker Cooperatives is run by, uh, you know, JWCU. However, you know, again, you know, JWCU is federation and mm. uh, Central Worker Cooperative is primary worker cooperatives. Yeah. And the democratic governance of uh, Central Worker Cooperatives is very difficult because uh, National Federation, uh, as I told you, is okay because, uh, you know, we, uh, we, we have, uh, you know, General Assembly just, uh, just once per year. It's okay. And, uh, you, know, uh, our, you know, our discussion is pretty simple. You know, uh, a certain kind of direction, uh, national direction, or worker cooperative movement, or something like that. So, however, uh, you know, decision making uh, in primary worker cooperatives is more complex. So, we have to discuss, you know, so many, you know, detailed issues, right? Um, our business, uh, in terms of our business practice. So, in this figure, uh, as you, uh, as uh, your question is very, uh, your question is very critical and very uh, important. So how to how to keep you know democratic governance of worker cooperatives, and uh, actually you know we don't have a clear uh, uh, we don't have a, I don't have a clear uh, clear answers. So however right now you know we are repeating you know uh, uh, general assembly at different level in mm -hmm. in in June every year within central worker cooperatives. First of all, uh, you know we uh, we have uh, as I told you you know uh, there are. 350 uh, business centers uh, within central worker cooperatives. And in all uh, business centers, we have uh, you know, certain kind of small uh, general assemblies. And all members are voting and then uh, uh, voting, right? Uh, to, you know, to, uh, to, uh, you know, uh, to uh, our uh, directions, uh, to our uh, policies, right? To, uh, and then, you know, second level, you know, certain kind of uh, we have uh, we we, uh, we we are having certain kind of regional general assemblies, and then representative or representative of each business centers uh, come to uh, you know regional general assemblies, and then we are uh, we uh, we are voting again. Yeah. And moreover, you know, we will have a national national uh, uh, we uh, we have a general assembly at the national level, and then we are doing the same thing. Mm. And however, you know, this is obviously, you know, this is a pretty, pretty time consuming, but, uh, but uh, uh, we think, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty necessary, we think, you know, in order to keep you know, democracy or democratic governance or democratic decision making. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So however, you know, however, at the same time, uh, you know, um, more, uh, most uh, fitable scale of worker cooperatives to, you know, uh, to democratic governance is uh, maybe, uh, 30 or uh, 30 or 30 or 50 members at the maximum that, mm -hmm. that scale is uh I, I guess that scale is uh uh fit fitable most fitable to mm -hmm. you know democratic uh, procedure i think i see i see thank you so much um I, so i think the the key part is the decentralization of voting mechanism right i think that's what you're 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 saying as a strategy right now so i'm going to move on to the slido because i think we have similar questions uh, or at least questions that are along the same line uh, i know it's not the most voted but i think because it's similar let's let's ask that first um so it says please respond to the argument that co-ops are slow and inefficient thus cannot try what are some strategies to balance democracy and the ability to respond quickly? So you mentioned that there are le different levels of decision making, right? But then you also said that it's yes, it is time consuming, even though it's necessary. But what are the what are some strategies that you can employ to make sure that yes, it is uh, even though it's um, that not all decision needs to be made in this level in this general assembly level, right? So what are the what are some strategies that you can you can do or that you have done? Uh, the, the primary co-ops especially to make sure that you respond quickly on one hand but then keep the democracy on the other mm, yeah <clears throat> this is also a very important topic but uh, generally you know uh, i think you know, uh, not only local cooperatives but also all cooperatives you know uh, time consuming uh, time uh, you know time consuming time consuming process like you know uh, discussions or democratic argument is uh, pretty necessary 
even even if you know we cannot we cannot respond uh, you know to the uh, economic situation quickly even though we cannot do that so however you know democratic even if time consuming you know democratic discussion or democratic dem democratic procedure is uh, is more important than you know quick response to uh, you know uh, current situation because uh, as you know you know uh, a recent uh, joint sub company you know uh, says a lot uh, you know about you know choice and the concentration for instance uh, for instance and you know quick uh, quick decision making or something like that so however you know cooperative movement is in a different venue i think mm. in other words yeah uh, and and on the other hand you know uh, even if we don't have our, we cannot uh, respond quickly. So, however, you know, according to some research, there is a certain kind of religions uh, in you know cooperative uh, corporate, uh, cooperative economy or cooperative activity. You know, religions. Uh, you know, the term of religions, right? You know, certain kind of flexible, flexible nature of uh, you know cooperative economies. And or I, you know, by following the joint stock company, so we can we can respond quickly. We, uh, if we respond quickly, or if we you know. Uh, if we do, uh, you know, choice and concentration, but but uh, you know these uh, these uh, business, uh, according to some research, these uh, these these uh, business can be can be bankrupt bankrupt pretty easily or pretty uh, pretty quickly too. So, however, you know, corporate business, uh, you know, can be can can be uh, can su survive can can survive even if uh, you know uh, uh, the, the uh, time of depression. Or you know, like a renal shock, or you know, even under you know, uh, some pretty severe natural disasters. Mm. So in, yeah, so in this regard, you know, time time consuming process is not so bad, I think. Mm, okay. Yeah. 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 Noted. Okay. So I think I think you're right that cooperatives as an organization does view the economy with a different lens and prioritize different things. So maybe time time efficiency is not really something that. That that's you know that's a core value for the co-ops, but research have so shown, as you mentioned, that co-ops can endure and have strong endurance in even in times of crisis and depression. Yes. Right. Um. Thank you so much for that answer. Let's move on to the next question, which is the most voted. It says, um, what are the important institutions uh, that need to be built to boost the development of worker co-op? Is it credit union? Is it incubator? Is it consumer co-op or the other? So maybe you can also tie it with the uh, with the the worker cooperative act that is just enacted in Japan. How is that re legislation kind of, you know, contributing to the ecosystem of the co-ops? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, actually, uh, the enactment of law or you know legal legal framework is uh, you know is uh, pretty necessary or absolutely necessary for the development of workers cooperative, of course, but. Uh, yeah, so, but uh, I am thinking, uh, but uh, this uh, question is uh, uh, is pretty important uh, apart from, you know, such a legal, uh, legal framework because, uh, for instance, uh, do you know Mondragon? Uh, Mondragon is the biggest yeah. worker cooperative in the world in, you know, Basque counties. And the Mondragon uh, created, uh, you know, labor bank in, I, I think, in the 1950s, a uh, pretty early stage of their histories because uh, money or funding is very important. Mm. And yeah, and uh, on the on the other hand, you know, worker cooperative in Japan, you know, we establish a central worker cooperatives. You know, central worker, uh, you know, generally speaking, you know, worker cooperative in the world is pretty small. Uh, you know, uh, from five or ten, uh, you know, members, or you know, forty or uh, fifty members at the ma uh, maximum, uh, generally speaking. So, however, you know, these small worker cooperatives uh, is uh, you know. Uh, is is, is uh, somehow weak in you know financial sense of course because they cannot they cannot they cannot correct uh, you know in our funds mm -hmm. so in this regard uh, Mondragon established labor bank of their own and JWCU established central worker cooperatives and mm -hmm. central worker cooperatives is pretty huge uh, as I told you and so actually you know we uh, JWCU we uh, we uh, reserved you know money or certain kind of fund through the activity of central worker cooperatives. And uh, mm -hmm. so, yeah, we correct, you know, certain kind of, uh, uh, we correct suffers from uh, central worker co cooperatives. And uh, yeah, so in this regard, uh, yeah, so uh, in this regard, uh, up to your choice or up to your strategies, if uh, you, can, you can establish, uh, you know, such a, uh, you know, a financial institution, 
like labor bank or credit unions uh, for uh, for the uh, for developing local co uh, cooperative movement, or you know you can you can establish you know uh, large scale uh, worker cooperatives. So in order to in order to uh, in order to lead uh, you know all worker cooperatives, including small uh, small uh, small uh, small co uh, small cops uh, in your countries. I see. Okay. So yes, you're saying legislation is important, but then it's also as important to have this infrastructure that pools capital to support cooperatives uh, in mm -hmm. the country. So uh, maybe a, a follow up questions on that. Uh, if I were a person in Japan wanting to open a co-worker cooperative, what financing open uh, what what financing options are available to me other than uh, you know um, from loans or you know grants from the kind of um, uh, association that you've just mentioned, the Central co Work Cooperative. Other than that, what other financial financing option do I have um, if I were such a person? All right. Uh, yeah, actually, JWCU uh, and uh, Central uh, Central Worker Cooperatives or uh, JWCU, as uh, I told you, JWCU reserve you know certain kind of fund mm. uh, through Central Worker Cooperatives. And then you know, actually, right now, uh, right now, you know, uh, our uh, worker cooperative act in act, worker cooperative act in Japan will be e effective on uh, this uh, October first of this year. And right now, you know, there are so many people who want to establish worker cooperatives. Mm -hmm. So, however, they don't have money uh, starting up uh, st starting up a fund. They, they don't have such a thing. So, right now, so we are uh, we are uh, trying to establish you know certain kind of uh, financial scheme. Uh, with uh, you know other uh, labor bank in Japan, mm -hmm. or, uh, or federation of credit unions in Japan, or you know some local governments. So, however, you know right now, so we don't have a uh, in Japan. There is not you know such a, a public uh, public fund or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, people can use uh, in order to establish worker cooperatives. And our, you know, we have a certain sort of resource, actually. So, however, you know, our resource is uh, is not big; it's uh, pretty small. So, uh, we, uh, you know, totally, totally, uh, our uh, financial power is totally limited. So, mm -hmm. in this regard, I, uh, we, JWC, we are trying to, uh, we are talking about, you know, governmental authorities to establish, you know, certain kind of public or semi semi uh, public uh, funding. For worker cooperatives, in other words, uh, you know, among, uh, you know, private, uh, private cooperative banks, uh, like credit unions, labor bank, and the local government and central government. So we are, uh, we are, uh, you know, uh, talking uh, with you know government officials about the, uh, the possibility of establishing this kind of fund. Uh, so, however, right now, you know, uh, there is not uh, such a thing in Japan, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, in Italy, uh, you know, there's a law, uh, Marcola law uh, in Italy, mm -hmm. and uh, Marcola law is, is a law for work, workers buyout. And you know workers buyout, right? So yeah. if, uh, if uh, work, uh, workers, uh, Italian workers want to buy, you know, their business uh, from their companies and uh, convert their business uh, to, you know, worker cooperatives, uh, they, can, they can borrow, you know, uh, some, uh, some, uh, some money, uh, some capital, from uh, from uh, funding, which was uh, which is established by Italian government and mm -hmm. uh, you know Italian federa cooperative federations. So yeah, uh, we need we need this kind of uh, you know financial uh, financial scheme in Japan. Right. Okay. Got it. So other than the reserve fund, there is an option for credit unions, uh, uh, and and um, and of course the the public funds that you are trying to push and champion in Japan as well. Yes. Okay. Um, all right, so moving on to the next question from Slido. Um, uh, we have a question on worker dispatching business. Yeah, I, I also saw this in your presentation and, and wondered the same. What is a worker dispatching business and why is it exempted from the type of business that worker co-op can service? Uh, what well, worker dispatching business? Uh, actually, you know, I'm, I'm always thinking, to, uh, thinking how to, how to uh, translate uh, this, uh, you know, this kind of business style in Japan uh, into English. But uh, I'm sure you know there, uh, there are such a business in your country or in uh, you know in uh, you know uh, many countries. Uh, worker dispatching business is uh, is to you know is to send workers to you know uh, to other companies. However, oh, you know okay. uh, working working contract between oh outsourcing yeah uh, yeah outsourcing outsourcing business yeah. I see. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, 
go ahead sorry and the outsourcing business uh, is prohibited uh, by Japanese uh, you know Japanese local Kobayashi act in uh, act because uh, outsourcing uh, you know outsourcing under outsourcing business you know worker cannot join you know decision making process of uh, you know of, of the company you are working right because uh, they are they have a, a working contract business contract with their you know outsourcing company right mm. and they cannot they cannot be uh, they cannot be engaged in the decision making process of uh, of the companies for uh, for which you are working right so mm. in this regard uh, yeah, outsourcing uh, business is prohi uh, prohibited in Japan uh, by worker worker cooperatives. I see. I see. It's because of the nature of the business that uh, does not allow for that, um, yes, you know, yes. in democratic um, inclusion of the workers that are contracted. Yes. Yes. Um, Okay, so I think we have another question on Slido that says, "Are you do you agree that law is a significant uh, factor of the worker cooperative massive development in Japan?" Um, so I think you talked about this a little bit um, when you when you answer the first the question on Japan Worker Cooperative Act. But um, in general, historically, do you think law, the, the legal framework that Japan has for cooperative worker cooperative, has contributed to its massive development as of today? Mm. Uh, so. Uh... Honestly, I'm not sure for the future, but uh, however, yeah, I hope, I hope, uh, you know, uh, 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 as I told you, so, you know, actually, you know, uh, worker cooperative in Japan, so we have developed our movement, you know, for almost 40 years, even without law. So, mm. in this, yeah, so in this regard, uh, we can, we can think, uh, so we can think, even if uh, without such a uh, legal framework, we can, we can develop, you know, worker cooperative movement uh, in every field. So, however, uh, on the other hand, you know, our 40 years activities uh, was, uh, was um, reflected in uh, Worker Cooperative Act in Japan, I think. Mm -hmm. So, in this regard, our, uh, our practice, uh, worker co uh, practice of Worker Cooperative in Japan created or uh, contributed to the creation of, of the law. And then, so I hope, the law legal framework will mm. contribute to yes. the development of of uh, of our movement to work up with in Japan. But uh, but uh, um, I'm not sure. I see. So it's 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 interesting to say to hear you say that um, the develop the for forty years uh, worker co-ops in Japan have developed despite maybe the lack of you know regulation despite mm -hmm, the law. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, how do you see expansion then? How, how, what do you see, what do you think is the cause for this expansion? Um, is it because there is a, federate, a federation that you have right now working to proactively identify sector where there's opportunity to develop co-ops? Or is it because in Japan, uh, generally there's already a level of awareness about the benefit of worker co-op and people are organically creating this, um, this, you know, this co-ops? What do you think? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, could you please say again your yeah, yeah, uh, your yeah. question? Yeah, yeah. So, is it what do you think is the cause of why the the sector has been able to develop despite the lack of law, or despite the oh, lack of regulation? Is it because a federation like yourself mm -hmm. proactively identify opportunity? Oh, this is a sector that we can develop co-ops in, mm -hmm. or is it because in Japan there is a level of awareness that mm -hmm. oh, people want to make co-ops, people like co-ops, and they so that's why they're making it. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. So uh, simply, uh, simply, sim uh, simply speaking, I think uh, you know that uh, that is a thought or spirit mm -hmm. or uh, thinking. Our our uh, in a certain sense, our ideology. Ideology is not mm -hmm. is not a good, good time. I think, but uh, uh, thinking or our mind is uh, most important. I think because uh, you know, <clears throat> almost forty years ago, you know, uh, my my uh, our you know success, uh, ancestors. Um, our seniors, you know, they, they don't have, uh, they have nothing. They have, uh, they don't have a they don't have money, and they they have nothing. So, however, you know, they they, they there are uh, several people, you know, uh, almost ten or fifteen people. That's it. And however, you know, they they have a very strong will and a very strong spirit to establish worker cooperatives. Mm -hmm. So, in order in order to <clears throat> in order to 
create uh, you know democratic uh, situation in Japanese economies. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and before that, you know they learned a lot uh, from uh, you know Italian worker cooperative movement and the Mondragon Spain worker cooperative movement. And then you know they uh, strongly uh, thought uh, you know we should uh, we should uh, or we should could we should or could establish uh, or develop worker cooperative movement. So even if they don't have the money uh, and they don't have a, a role, and even if they don't have a, they didn't have a, you know, a national federation at the, at the time. So yeah, in, in this regard, <coughs> uh, such a split uh, is uh, very, very important, I think. Mm, okay. So it's, it's, it's really interesting because you said uh, Japanese are ideologically aligned with democratic um, uh, economy, which is which is interesting because I think in Indonesia, it's a bit similar, right? We, we are founded, uh, our well, at least when our founding, fa founding father, um, you know, uh, strive for our independence, the, the, the spirit was also democratic economy, but somehow it didn't materialize. I don't know why, maybe that's a discussion for later, especially for the people who are here. But I'm going to stop here and then see if there is any more uh, of the participant that wants to directly convey their questions or comments or just anything directly uh, by speaking. I think we've finished the questions on Slido. Anyone? Oh, yeah, there is. There is one. Uh, yes. I think this is Alia, right? But Alia. Yeah, uh, my name is Alia too, but uh, to make uh, two individuals very distinct. Uh, you can call me by Amelia, my first name here. Okay, uh, hi, hello, uh, Mr. Nakano. My name is Amelia. Um, I just wanted to share uh, a little bit of history about why uh, in, in Indonesia, uh, the cooperative movement is not so flourished, is not so uh, developed uh, 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 in compared to in your country, in Japan. So um, I think uh, as Alia has mentioned before, our founding fathers are uh, the sole, I don't know, the sole bearer, pal bearer, the, the flag bearer of cooperative movement or uh, in democratic economy. But then uh, there are some efforts that are in place uh, in terms of uh, rep repressing the cooperative movement here by Suharto, I think, is, is our right wing president and I think it's also due aspect. So it is deteriorate. Uh, they are actively deterior deteriorating uh, the co-op laws here. That uh, compared to Japan, I think uh, our co-op law used to used to uh, say that if you want to make a cooperative, you have to at least amass twenty people. So as opposed to in Japan, I think it's only three people, right? That you can uh, instantly. Uh, make a cooperative. That's one thing. And then the second thing is that the the co-op is also restricting the businesses that the co-op can do. As opposed in Japan, you can do anything, right? So yeah, I think that's the legacy of why the cooperative movement here in Indonesia is so slow. And our homework here is that I think we, we have to change the mindset first that the cooperative is not so bad. And it's not so backwards as the co-op law here make. And yeah, I think that's the I think that's the fundamental difference here between Indonesia and Japan. Because unfortunately, we have uh, the right wing and possibly do expect that don't want cooperative movements here to flourish. That's all. Thank you. Thank you so much for that answer. That directly answers my question, actually. But so yeah, the law does disincentivize people to to create co-ops, and co-ops are conditioned in a way, uh, at least you know, regulatorily, um, in a way that does not make them um, succeed. So it's it's very unfortunate. And I think these learning from you, uh, Nakano-san, is really important because then we can clearly articulate what are the kind of reforms in terms of you know policies. That we need to push in order for 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 um for the sector to to benefit from, I think. Um, any any other questions? Any other uh, people want to comment or give their feedback? Uh, yeah. So if not, then uh, Bima and Masena, do you think we can close the sector? Because I think uh we 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 are we've already discussed and covered quite a lot of grounds here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe we can close the session, but before that, uh, we can 
uh, give the last opportunity for yeah, Mr. Nakano to say the closing statement for us. Yeah. Jadi, uh, closing statement from me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I'm very happy to be uh, here today. And uh, actually, you know, I myself uh, pretty, uh, pretty enjoy it. Uh, and uh, yeah, but the uh, uh, presenter is only me. <laughs> and <laughs> hopefully, hopefully <laughs> next time. So there are other presenters. So, so we, can, we can have yeah. our discussions. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but uh, it's uh, pretty enjoyed. And uh, again, you know, Hey, actually, you know, Hader uh, today is coming here, and uh, you know, her uh, her uh, organizations is a member of the Cooper uh, Japan mm -hmm. So, so in this regard, we are uh, we are already friends. So we are already uh, you okay. know same member of uh, you know one, uh, same organizations. So uh, please keep in touch, and uh, you know through Cooper AP. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very thank much. You very much. Yeah, this is more of a talk show than a panel. <laughs> so thank you very much for that, Mr. Nakano. Okay. Okay, before we close this session, maybe we can take a picture. So please, for all the participants, you can open your camera and we will take a picture. Okay, please open your camera. Okay, we will still waiting. Okay. 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 Are we alone? Take a photo. One, two, cheese. Cheese. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nakano. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.